Welcome back to some new r slash malicious compliance stories, where people comply to the letter, but not the spirit of a request. I hope you had a great day. Thanks for all the likes and comments on the last video. And now, let's start with the first story. It's called Too Loud. It was early 2018. I was a sales rep for a corporate location of one of the big US cellular companies, working in a very busy and very tiny old store. I'm also one of the top sales reps in our district. My job is to sell. I do well at my job by recommending things I'm generally enthusiastic about and transferring that enthusiasm to my customers. I did exactly what they wanted. I got to know my customers and found things that they would actually use and love and they would be my loyal customers and by my recommendations. We also were required to do as many demos as possible in a day. I was throwing my phone in its otter box, pumping up music on the Bluetooth, having a fun time with my customers while transferring their data. Three times across three months, we'd have some senior that literally needed to call customer service and didn't need us to sit in our tiny sales floor and make their call, then get upset they couldn't hear over the tiny room full of reps and customers actually buying stuff, which is what the sales location is for. My boss kept pulling me aside, telling me things like, I know you get enthusiastic, but your voice carries and it's a small place. You have to tone it down. By the third time, I just felt defeated. I was depressed. I was walking on eggshells. I was quieter for a week. I had two days in a row off came back in and the same boss pulled me aside again. Remember how I told you to bring it down? I was wrong. It's terrible. You are the engine that brings this team together. It's like you are a ghost. The vibes of the whole place are trash now. We need you back. Forget I ever said anything. It was dumb. We need you. I danced my way back onto the sales floor. He started telling the complainers to go home and call if they wanted quiet. We've got a job to do. Only time I've had a boss admit they messed up. The next story is called CEO Messed Up. I was the only male staff working a warehouse at a branch. I would usually be looked for whenever any heavy lifting that couldn't be resolved with machines was required. The CEO of the company decided to stop by for the week to evaluate our operations. A truck came with an awkward fright that needed to be rigged to a crane extension on our forklift and I was the only one that could do it. The CEO had decided to stop by that week to evaluate our performance. They were looking for me for about 10 minutes as I was coming out the bath and she asked me where I had been, told her I had been using the bath and assumed that was the end of it. Cue the next day. I go in to do my business only to find the toilet seat missing. I was fit back then, so I managed, but still headed to the branch manager to ask what was going on. Branch manager apologized and said the CEO decided to renovate only the male bathroom and the porter john hadn't arrived on site yet. I had a lunch planned with a big baller client that day. And wouldn't you know it, we went to the Mexican joint we go to every year. By the time we made it back to the branch, he had to use the bathroom and, well, he listened to what I had to say, confirmed it with the branch manager and went on his way. He is close with most of the board members. So a week later, the CEO went separate ways with the company. I got my toilet seat back and handed in my letter at the same time. The third story is called Debt Compliance. This happened in Australia many years ago. The rules may be different where you live, especially in the US and for larger debts. I was in my early 20s, working basically my first real job and was offered an Amex. Later, unemployed, I maxed it out to 2K pretty quickly. Since the interest was now a big chunk of the money I was getting from social security, I often missed payments. And when I did pay, it barely changed the balance. Eventually, a debt collection service got involved and hassled me for money almost daily. I was talking to a friend who worked for a loan company and he told me 
Under finance laws, you are legally paying a debt as long as you are making regular payments of a minimum amount, which at the time was about $5 per week. So I set up a recurring direct debit of $5 and told the collection agency in writing that was the maximum I could afford. It wasn't. They made threats, but I stuck to it. Sure enough, after a few weeks of this, they sent me a letter, cancelling the entire debt with no default recorded. It's not a default if they terminate the debt, only if you stop paying. Obviously, it was costing them more in debt collection and management fees than I was giving them, and at the rate I was paying, it would have gone on for years. The next story is called Parking Spots. A neighbor of mine complained that my roommate and I park in the same parking spot, which is right next to the walkway up to the apartment building. Both of us ride motorcycles, and both motorcycles belong to me, but my roommate rides one to get to work. She accused me of using my second bike to get a defective reserved parking spot, when nobody in the complex has one, and said that what I'm doing is not fair, and it's cheating. I said, okay, I'll stop parking both my bikes in one spot. She seemed satisfied with that and left. An hour later, I had all seven of my motorcycles, five of them from inside the garage I rent, but it's halfway across the apartment complex, sitting in front of the apartment building, taking up every prime parking space in front of the walkway to my hall in the building. She went straight to management to complain. The management came out and knocked on my door. We can't have you using up every parking space. Let me guess. Karen complained. Yes. She told me I'm not allowed to have two bikes in one parking space to reserve a space. I'm not doing it to reserve a space. Both my roommate and I ride both of the bikes we park in that one space. All the bikes belong to me, but I gave the keys to one of them to my roommate to ride for commuting to work. The other one is my bike for going wherever I need. We park both in one spot to be nice and conserve parking spaces so other people have somewhere to park. I was just showing Karen what would happen if I'm only allowed one bike per parking space. The other five bikes are generally in another parking space, in my garage. The apartment manager said, I understand. You made your point and I'll talk to her. Please put the other five bikes back in the garage. No problem. It's been a few weeks, but I haven't heard from Karen. The last story is called the secret. Around 2008, I was a radiology assistant in a mammography unit, meaning I was the person who ushered in patients, showed them where to put their belongings, give them the go and instructions. Another part of my job was keeping the radiology station clean and tidy, so that work surfaces were clear and sanitary. Around the same time, the secret was huge and my co-workers were all way into it. I fought with a few of the radiology techs about it, but I was completely outnumbered. So I tried to just keep my head down, focus on patients and do my job, which included tidying up their magazines, books and other secret related materials that they would leave strewn all over the counters. Since they all hated me for not being in their secret clique, they decided to gang up on me and go to the managers with complaints about my attitude. I was called out of work into a disciplinary ambush meeting where I explained my side of things. One of the higher up managers totally agreed with me and actually defended me. But at the conclusion of the meeting, I was told not to touch anyone else's stuff because there were complaints that I was shoving magazines into the corners and threw away someone's copy of the secret. I really wish I had, but I actually did not do that. It was a complete lie. So by complaining about me, my idiotic co-workers effectively took away the part of my job, which was cleaning up after them. I was no longer allowed to touch their magazines. So they piled up two inches deep on every surface, plus empty bottles of yogurt containers, used napkins, cafeteria trays, popcorn detritus, and all sorts of other trash. The workstation looked like a landfill, 
they would be absolutely seething about it and glaring at me, but I would sit there, happily doing absolutely nothing about it, since I wasn't allowed to touch their stuff. Thanks for watching the video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe. And if you have time, watch another one of my videos. And now, I hope you have a great day. See you soon. Bye bye.